I've built an end-to-end -end browser automation that is actually functional and useful for business in under two hours using Cloud Sonnet, specifically with Windsurf the IDE. This is an automation that I've built also back in the days using Microsoft Power Automate, which is an RPA tool, robotic process automation tool. Back in the days, it took me, I think, like two months of tweaking, going back and forth until I figured everything out, chose the correct selectors, did the correct scraping. And this time, just using Windsurf, I was able to build this within two hours. And it's actually way better than what I built in the past. In this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts regarding building browser automations with uh, LLM, specifically this instance was with Windsurf. My thoughts about building automations and coding in general using a natural language in VS Code or using AI coding assistance versus using low code or no code tools. And obviously I will share with you the automation. Let's get going. What I wanted to do is build an Instagram outreach automation. This is something that I've built back in the day. Uh, I had like 20 different Instagram accounts that I bought. Um, we are guy in, uh, that I found on Skype, it, it's like 50 cents per account. And then I used proxies to rotate between the accounts and sending like 20 DMs every hour. I used an RPA tool this, uh, for this. Uh, and now I wanted to see how fast it will take me to build this with uh, Windsurf, which is my AI, the AI coding assistant that I'm using these days in conjunction with Claude. Uh, Claude or more accurate to say Clang, formerly known as Cloud Dev. By the way, the reason why I built this with Windsurf and not with Clang is because I saw many people uh, starting to complain about the fact that DeepSeek, which is the cheapest um, LLM coder, uh, LLM coding model, uh, has recently been kind of hallucinating or underperforming. And since I knew that this project will probably require many back and forth, I wanted to use a uh, Windsurf, which has like a monthly fee instead of using Klein, in which you pay for every uh, API request. Before moving forward, just a quick favor. If you're interested in learning more about AI agents, coding assistance and automation, please make sure to subscribe to our channels. It really makes a difference. So my original flow was with RPA. Um, let me show you the flow. If you guys don't know, this is Microsoft Power Automate. This is the flow with all the subflows. So we have the error flow. I will go over it in a moment. They check, I think, remove requests. So a lot of stuff here is is not necessarily relevant, cleaning up old friend requests, etc. But the main idea in this flow was that I scraped a bunch of Instagram profiles of my prospects. Um, I stored them in an Excel file. And then I had like 10 different DMs to rotate between them because I didn't want to send the same DM because if you send the same DM, it might, uh, I mean, Instagram will recognize suspicious uh, movement. So randomly uh, chose between different DMs and then with random weights, every between to between, I don't know, 10 to 10 seconds to 20 seconds, it would open the browser, open the specific profile, click the message button, send, uh, make sure that I didn't send the DM in the past to that user and then send them uh, one of the DMs. After 20 uh, DMs, it would take a break of one hour. And after doing 100 DMs per day, or when hitting uh, an error, like a limitation by Facebook, it would pause. I would let this run every night. Uh, I have a Hionix server, which uh, has like Windows installed on it, and I just was running this via the cloud. And this is an RPA automation, so it actually opens up all the like the Excel and the browser in the front end, and you can see it uh, move, and it actually does the movement. So it reduces the likelihood of being uh, flagged by the platform. But on the other hand, it kind of uh, takes control of your PC. So unless you're doing this in the night or have your own server, you can't work 
while run while this is running on the in the background so as you can see this is pretty comprehensive i also looked for specific keywords so anyone that had a ROAS on the page i would mark him as true and meaning he's a he's a prospect and then based on many filters it i decided or the automation the workflow decided whether or not we should send him the dm and obviously we kept track of all the dms sent every day we had like a summary of how many dms we sent all the errors everything was very well tracked um i'm not i don't want to go into much detail over here because this isn't the point of the video but the point what I want to make is it took me like two months to build this RPA automation. Many tweaks, many adjustments, many errors, a lot of uh, going back and forth with choosing the correct selectors. Um, one thing that I wanted to share is in order to enter all the leads into the Excel, I what I did is either I used the scraping mechanism in Microsoft Power Automate track data from web you can do it over here or you have different ways that you can source leads one way is using appify so let's say you want to uh, source all the people who liked or uncommented on a specific post you can use this bot by appify you can go to phantom buster and um, which is uh, it costs money but you get 10 minutes daily for free and you can have here, you have here many different solutions for scraping different social platforms. So collecting all the followers, auto follow, a lot of different alternatives. Um, for me, what I like using is either I use Microsoft Power Automate or what I showed you, but my go-to is this uh, instant data scraper, which is a Chrome extension, a free Chrome extension that allows you to very easily um, select tables and then you can decide what you want to export or scrape so in this instance let's say we want to export all the flows available you, you saw that i just selected the relevant table and now i can just download the csv we can also do this in facebook instagram whatever so if you guys are not using instant data scraper it's like my best uh, chrome extension i highly recommend you check it out okay so assuming that i have these um, all these leads i would put them in an excel file and then let the rpa automation run now what i wanted to do today is use natural language now i wanted to cover this in this video um i've been messing around with n8n lately and as you saw i have like extensive background in using microsoft power automate but I'm kind of thinking whether or not these low code, no code tools are becoming useless. And the reason why I'm thinking about this is because at the end of the day, using a, an AI coding assistant today, assuming that you're not afraid of using an IDE and you're not afraid of, of some code is going to be faster than actually building a flow, even in a no code solution. So even if I wanted to build this flow in N8N, or I don't know, other platforms, someone uh, mentioned Flowwise or stuff like this, it would probably take me longer because I had to know the platform and had to start dragging all the nodes. Um, it would probably take me longer than if I built this, in my opinion, using natural language in the AI coding assistant. Now, this is basically what I tested. I didn't build it this time with NA10. Back in the days, I built it with RPA, and today I built it with an IDE. So the IDA that I used is Windsurf. Um, Windsurf is, you can say it's a competitor of Cursor. It's a fork of VS Code. Basically, um, you pay, I don't know, I think it's, it was, today it's 15 bucks. I think my um, my user, I, I paid 10, I'm paying 10 bucks. I'm not sure regarding the plans, but it's somewhere between 10 to 15 bucks per month and you have uh, I wouldn't say unlimited but almost unlimited calls to the best performing models um, GPT-40, Cloud Sonnet, etc. And also if you want to expand it's pretty cheap um, and how it looks like is it looks like this it looks exactly like VS Code by the way you can add client over here so work with them in conjunction 
together and basically what i love about uh, windsurf is that you can it's kind of similar to all the other ai coding assistants in terms of you just speak with the ide and it's going to generate the code um, here's how it looked like so i just told him can you help me create an automation that i provide a url and then automation opens my browser using playwright playwright is a, a browser automation solution like puppeteer um, and click and clicks on a button i will tell you on which button i need so then it started building the project we did go back back and forth many times uh, as you can see here we had a few uh, issues in terms of choosing the correct selectors and then um, handling some errors but eventually it took me less than two hours and i was able to get this browser automation up and running basically it uses um, as i said playwright it opens this excel file over here with all the URLs that I scraped up front, and then it just adds uh, the status. So whether or not it was an error, or if it uh, sent the message uh, pending, or users that I didn't send um, the messages to yet. And this is a CSV. Um, all the errors here are because I, I had like a, a, a logging issue that I didn't uh, update, but it is working correctly now. And we also have this log file that contains the status of each uh, iteration when it started what it tested so navigating to instagram login filling the login form waiting for login to complete additional wait processing the specific url then the error it encountered and then it like does like a bottom line like a summary of all the iterations and this is crazy useful and i love the fact that it just generated the log file i just asked it for a log file and generated a way better log files that i i have would have generated on my own uh, actually in the rpa solution that i built i have logging but it's pretty uh, ugly and dirty and here everything is very well classified obviously it generated an excellent readme and the git ignore file with the env file dot uh, env and the password and username in order to log in to my instagram account and yeah i'm very happy about this automation let me uh, i'm not sure if i should I mean, I'm not sure if it's interesting to see. I just hit the play button and it's going to open up um, the browser. It's going to click on um, send message. Then it's going to add the message. So, hey, how are you or whatever. And then it's going to click the send button. And then it's, it's, it waits for a random delay between 20 seconds to one minute and so on and so on. It just loops over all the users in the csv file after 20 users it takes it takes a break of one hour um, that's pretty much it i just wanted to encourage you to check out windsurf i think it's a very valuable and powerful ide um, i'm not sure if it's better i mean it's different from cursor and and klein each has its pros and cons some people say that uh, Windsurf handles larger contexts better than the alternatives. I'm not sure about it. I uh, really love, as you guys know, I love Klein, but I'm using Windsurf very often as well. The good thing about Windsurf is the fact that, as you can see here, besides the pricing model, uh, and I do feel that it can uh, understand a large pieces of context very well, is also the UX and UI. It's very um, fun. To actually play with it and building with it is very easy um, let me think if i can show you an example mm, i just suggest that you mess around with it instead of me just uh, boring you if you guys are interested i can make a follow-up video in which i add more features to this um, flow and i will share the recording like kind of streaming style in which i encounter all the errors and debugging but for now i just wanted to share this powerful tool and also I wanted to share, like, I mean, the main takeaways are, first of all, that I'm not sure if no code and low code are here to stay, because as I felt here, just using natural language is actually way faster and mo way more effective. So this is actually amazing. The second thing is I feel that browser automation and scraping are amazing use cases for building with the AI coding assistance. 
because usually when you're building uh, browser automation, you don't need a huge knowledge base and a, a huge code base. And usually when you have a big code base and using a, a, an AI coding assistant, this is when uh, shit uh, starts hitting the fan. So specifically, I feel that browser automations are like have the sweet spot of on one hand being very useful for, from a business perspective. And on the other hand, they don't require a huge code base. So using AI coding assistance in browser automation is actually very powerful. Uh, my next steps uh, is going to connect this automation. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I think about cold outreach in general. Um, but if I decide to progress, if I see like good results with the current cold uh, cold outreach, my next steps are going to add a layer of proxy rotation with different uh, more users because basically Instagram imposes limits on uh, cold outreach makes sense uh, but we can bypass them with um, proxy rotation residential proxies um, what else did i want to cover let's open canva make sure that i covered everything so back and forth for playwright yeah that's pretty much it obviously if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe leave your feedback below i always i, I try to respond to all comments i always read the comments Mm, until next time, keep on automating.